So something super interesting happened on Twitter today morning, yesterday late night, where Amar shared a screenshot of Swiggy's app, where uh, he searched for the word Prashant and Krozos got served. Um, I quickly wrote because this is an interesting problem. Information retrieval, something that I, as a domain, I find interesting. Uh, I quickly shared how this could be implemented. Uh, it uses basically synonymic query expansion to do it. This is something that I used very heavily at NKDP when we were rebuilding its search uh, to improve relevance. So this typically works well for educators search. So when you search for an educator name on NKDP, this worked wonders. Um, then um, Akash replied to this where he said that, hey, this looks like a problem uh, of finding similar sounding words. And he mentioned an algorithm which I was completely unaware of. I've used other two algorithms, but not this nicest algorithm. Um, and this led me to, uh, so I replied a few things on how it could be implemented and not. And I realized that this is a great idea for a YouTube video where I could share my learnings from my times of building search and how this would have been implemented. So let's dig deeper into this. So a regular search engine that we see is typically what your lexical search is. Your lexical search is essentially where your documents are matched on text similarity. So you essentially put your words, uh, all the things that you have in your corpus in uh, an inverted index. An inverted index is essentially your word mapped with all the document IDs where it is present. Then for a given search query, you essentially try to match the word uh, do either set union, set intersection, given your logic, and then you get your candidate list. And from there, you apply ranking uh, using TFID, BM25, any algorithm, and then you surface your search results. Now, this is literal text that it matches. Right? You can add a bit of fuzziness to it to make it typo tolerant. Fuzzy means, let's say, instead of uh, typing word, let's say Arnold Schwarzenegger, I misspelled a couple of characters here and there it would handle it, but it doesn't do well, like literal text with fuzzy, it's still okay. But as a lexical search, uh, which purely works on the words, uh, thing is it doesn't know that Krishna and Krishna are same. Right? So there are limitations to it. We'll go through a few limitations and see how uh, other search algorithms or other techniques help us achieve what we want to achieve. So lexical search essentially breaks uh, if the exact word or its fuzzy variation is not present in the corpus. That's where it starts to hiccup. For example, for example, let me give examples to each one of the cases. Uh, let's say you're looking up for the word home and your entire corpus is filled with the word house. So in that case, even if you type home, you might not get any document because there is no home in your corpus at all. So this is one thing where non-existence of the word is causing the problem. Second is let's say spelling variations. These are not typos, but these are variations of the spelling. For example, Krishna, 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 I, double E and whatnot. You might not be able to match it. Then misspellings where it is actually a typo that happened. It may sound similar. It may not sound similar, but it's a typo that happened. So uh, without fuzzy, your lexical search is not capable of solving this. Then synonyms is another big problem that it cannot handle, which is uh, your, uh, if you search for car, you might not just be interested in car, but let's say a document might not contain car, but it might contain vehicle or sedan or SUV that should also come up, right? So this is what your lexical search also doesn't handle. Then your nicknames, let's say a, per a person is called, let's say Raj versus Raja versus Rajesh versus Bittu. These are like nicknames of the same person lexical search doesn't solve this problem. So it doesn't solve the problem of abbreviations as well, like AI versus artificial intelligence, US versus USA versus America versus United States of America. So this is where it causes the problem. Now, where does it fit in Prashant versus Kreuzer? Like for example, uh, obviously they are not the same words. Uh, so how far are they with respect to edit distance? So if you take the edit distance between Prashant and Kreuzer, it comes out to be four. So if you, let's say, index a lot of documents in Elasticsearch and you put an edit distance of four that, hey, I'm okay tolerating edit distance of four. Then if you look for the word Prashant, 
in a Swiggy's database, of course, there wouldn't be any Prashant. But in Swiggy's database, when you look through it, you'll match essentially all the words, like all the documents containing the words that are four edit distance away for it. For example, words like merchant, elephant, pleasant, peasant, present, variant, variant, servant, all of this would match. Right. So in case they have it in their corpus, but in case this is a general thing where your fuzzy search might not be the best way to get the highest relevance that you are looking for because it has a tendency of matching a large set of correct words which might not be irrelevant okay so fuzzy search gone what do you do then comes the part of phonetic search this is something that uh, uh akash was mentioning that hey uh, prashant and krozo sound similar so can we can it be done with phonetic search so to set the context of phonetic search is phonetic search actually uses algorithms to encode words based on its pronunciation and uh, every word is converted to a root word with respect to the phonetic algorithm that we are picking. So this way multiple words would have the same key which is the same phonetic root word. There are three algorithms that people typically use soundex metaphon nices nices i heard for the first time which is why it got me curious that hey what is this thing that i like i built phonetic search but i had no idea about it so yeah uh, but yeah for us metaphon worked really well at an academy so um the whole idea of phonetic search is let's say if you pass house to a phonetic algorithm called metaphon it would spit out the keyword as or the phonetic root word as hs so uh, now you can start imagining that there could be multiple words which sound similar they would end up having the same phonetic root word and that would match a classic example a classic example is let's say you want to search for arnold schwarzenegger how many people would be able to type schwarzenegger the correct spelling in the first go? very few but you roughly know how it sounds so you may write a spelling which sounds Schwarzenegger. It might not be spelled exactly like Schwarzenegger. It might even be a few edit distance away, like three, four edit distance away, but it still sounds Schwarzenegger. So here I have a couple of variants that I added and I took a couple of algorithms as an example. So nice is for Schwarzenegger, I get got rid of one G as a typo and E got replaced with A. The nicest algorithm sees both of them as the same root word. And if let's say I kept E as E and G and got rid of G, Metaphon thinks both of these are same. So this way we take the keywords and convert it into a phonetic root word. And then again, there are multiple algorithms. Three I mentioned, there is also double Metaphon. So uh, which one works better in which case is roughly depend, rough, is dependent on your domain. So you have to do a little bit of trial and error and see which algorithm suits you more. And most uh search data like search databases like elastic search open search and whatnot offers this as a as a plugin or a first class citizen depending on what which one you are using one good thing about uh phonetic search is that it doesn't need any training data there is no training involved it's literally a uh, reduction of words into its root sounds simple rule based stuff is what they apply it's really fast uh we saw how, how quickly you can compute the root sound of it and Hence, it's something which is scalable. Uh, people use it over large data sets because it's not expensive. But what are the concerns? The concerns are two words which mean totally different things. They sound similar, but they mean totally different things would be reduced to the same word. For example, night and night. N-I-G-H-T, K-N-I-G-H-T. Diametrically opposite words, but they have the same sound. So if you apply metaphor, both gets reduced to N-T. N -T. And if you apply NICES, it reduces to NAGT. That's what happens. Now, if you apply Prashant versus Kreuzer to this, when you apply Prashant versus Kreuzer on uh, phonetic search, your Prashant reduces to PRXNT for metaphone and KRSNT for metaphone. So these two are not same. Neither for NICES they are same. For NICES, it's PRASAD and CRASAD. So they are not the same. So semantic, uh, sorry, so phonetic search would not work for Prashant and Kreuzer. It's not sounding similar. Right? Now, apart from phonetic search, what other example you have? What other search technique you have? You have semantic search. 
Now, semantic search essentially uses vector embeddings, classic vector embeddings like BERT and word doec and whatnot, to reduce the word to its vector form. And it is done on a training corpus. So imagine you have a corpus of news articles and the whole idea is, um, the whole idea is that you are matching the word on its meaning, not the literal, literal word. So this goes beyond the literal text comparison and it matches on uh, top of the meaning of the word. So the whole idea is you take the word, you have to have a training model either or you have to train it yourself. Uh, let's say news article stuff that you are taking and then each word is reduced to a vector embedding, a vector in an n dimensional space and depends on what type of training, how many dimensions you want to take and whatnot. And then whatever you're looking for, you also convert it into a vector and then look for in that vector space. That's what you do. Right? So this way you find semantically similar words. This is of course more resource intensive and your lookup is essentially KNN algorithm, which is expensive, of course, at scale, at scale, it's very expensive. Now, strengths are one of the best things about this uh, approach about semantic searches. If let's say there is a semantic relationship between two words in your training corpus, then it would have semantic relationship even if that other word doesn't exist. Let me explain. Let's say for words that are not present in your training corpus, let's say I'll take simple example house and home. So let's say if you're looking for the, uh, let's say your corpus does not have the word house at all, at all. It's filled with the word home, 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 home. but your model like BERT and word to wec was trained on news articles where you see both house and home used in similar context. So even though you don't have the word, even though you don't have the word house in your corpus, but if you still search for it, you would get documents containing home. So the documents containing home would also be matched over there. That's why that's how why you see nowadays the semantic search like vector databases are becoming famous and all. This is the reason why because the data on which it is trained on contains a lot of real world linkages right? that might not be present in your corpus, but it is still able to find them because the model that you use, it's not LLM model, it's simple, it's simple uh, word to wake model that you are training basis, your training corpus. It's typically news articles. You can train it on Wikipedia data, news articles, whatever text corpus you want to train it on and then use that there. So what happens if we do it Prashant versus Kreuzer on semantic search? Because Prashant and Kreuzer in any news article, it, there is no correlation to it in real world. You would not be able to find it. You would not be able to find it. Right? So Prashant versus Kreuzer, you cannot do it with phonetic search because they are different sounding words. Prashant versus Kreuzer, you cannot do semantically because it's, there is no real world relationship between the two words. So then what are we left with? This is where you have synonymic expansion. So the idea of synonymic expansion is very simple. So typically this is where given a query, you identify all the words in the query. Let's say search for the word Prashant. What you would have for your domain, let's say Swiggy as a restaurant business, it would have that these are the words that are synonyms of each other. Let's say as soon as the memes started trending, they added Prashant as synonymous to word cross on. So now what happened is when someone searched for word Prashant, they expand the query with its synonym. So Prashant and Krozo are synonymous as per Swiggy's database. So your query becomes Prashant or Krozo. This is then converted into elastic search query using or operator. And then the query is fired onto elastic search and then it matches the documents containing both of them. This way, when you search for Prashant, you get Krozo as the result set. And this is how I think, <laughs> I think Swiggy would have implemented this because phonetic wouldn't work, semantic wouldn't work. This works, right? Oh, so, semantic thing. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Uh, phonetic, oh, sorry. phonetic doesn't work, semantic doesn't work, synonym expansion would work over here. Sorry for the hiccup, it keeps happening. <laughs> okay, and this is what I wanted to share. I would highly recommend check out the thread on Twitter. You can go to my timeline, dig deeper. I've explained a few things here and there. 
and this is a good thing that i would love to talk about so i thought it's a good idea to cover searches this is something that i worked for about two years at an academy and like this yeah. domain is very close to my heart right now uh, it's fun it's fun i did my masters and took a lot of subjects in this domain so masta pretty fun so yeah this is all what i wanted to cover in this video i hope you found it interesting hope you found it amusing that's it for this one i'll see you in the next one thanks yeah. a lot